On launching the software, a splash screen comes up that appears to be brightening and darkening. The software is looking for what device is plugged in. Once the software opens, you'll see that it opens in basic mode with the monitor selected and it senses what is plugged into it. Now I have a color checker display plus plugged in so it's seeing that. So one click gets us to the display technology type and the presets. So we're going to choose photo preset and you'll notice up here that in the basic mode we're sensing the display plus we have it set on white LED and if you don't know your monitor technology type white LED is a good serviceable setting to use. It's automatically set on D65 120 candelas uh, per meter square which is the basic photo setting that we use in the industry. Now these are grayed out because we're in basic mode okay so these are not available in basic mode they are also not available uh, using the color checker display device. White LED, photo, we hit next, we hit start measurement. If you have the ability to change contrast on your monitor, click this. If you do not, like I do not on this laptop monitor that I'm using, then leave only brightness set. This screen is telling you to pick up your device that's plugged in and move the diffuser to the back of the device so that the lens right here the lens is open and then you're going to move the weight on the cable so that the device will sit on the monitor right in that circle and let's be sure that it's sitting very very flat tip your monitor back a little bit if you need to to make sure that it's very flat and hit next. Now if my luminance is turned all the way up on this laptop monitor that I'm using it's going to hit almost 500 candelas per meter square like burn your eyes out bright. But all, what you need to do is manually adjust your monitor so that it is as close to 120 as you can get without going under it. If you are going to be over or under, always be over. The software can push down the luminance. It can't pull up the luminance. And we hit next and start measurement. Let's talk about what happens when these colors are flashing on the screen. The software is sending color to the monitor. The software knows exactly what color it's sending. The hardware device is measuring the color that's produced on the monitor. That information is then fed back into the software. The software says, okay, I sent this color. I got this color. Now I'm going to make a correction table, a lookup table, a LUT that we call an ICC profile that will allow this monitor to produce color as accurately as this monitor can. Now this is very, very important to understand that each monitor has a limitation. So the goal here is to get the monitor we're using producing color as accurately as it possibly possibly can and that is what all these settings are about that's what all this is about now I'm gonna speed this up to an, an unrealistic speed so that we can move through the colors it does not go this fast it's about three minutes on a pro or a plus and about five minutes on a display device okay we're done we hit next we get a little look at uh, how this monitor measured compared to the colors that were actually sent. Uh, and then we're ready to save the profile. So I'm going to name this profile and there's the date. And I'm going to hit save. Once the profile saved, it's automatically applied. 
Now I have three different options here for evaluating my profile. See this little plus in the spyglass here? That's going to enlarge this photo so that I can look at before and after and see the difference in what the profile that was existing before and after I did my calibration. And I've got various other photos that I can look at before and after. I can even add my own photo in here, three different photos. So now we can go to profile information and again, enlarge the window. And we can see all kinds of things here. We can see that we were going for D65, 6500 Kelvin, and we actually achieved 6494. Very, very good. Uh, we were going for 120 candelas per meter square. We achieved that uh, since we can't adjust uh, the contrast ratio in the basic mode or uh, indeed on this monitor. Uh, we have a little higher contrast than we might want for a uh, screen to print match, but we'll deal with that in another uh, video. But I want you to look at something very important here. This is the profile that we achieved here in blue. If we look at P3, which is the capability of most of the monitors that we're going to get on uh, any reasonable uh, laptop that we're going to get, certainly in the Mac in the MacBook range or the Mac Air range, you can see that the profile we accomplished here is almost as large as P3. That is huge uh, for us to be able to uh, view what really is in the image. Now, don't let, me, don't let me confuse you here. P3 is not as big as Adobe RGB, which we're seeing here in red, but it's, it's pretty darn large if we compare it uh, to sRGB, quite a lot larger. Okay, so we're getting better than sRGB out of a laptop monitor here. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the, net, the last way we can evaluate our profile is by looking at uh, curves. Uh, now, these lines are very straight, and they're pretty darn close together, so this is a very, very healthy monitor. Or we can look at it in 3D. So let's pull up uh, the sRGB first. And let's look at that, okay? And then let's look at our brand spanking new profile overlaid on top of that. Look how much bigger that profile is than sRGB. That's awesome. And you can also add other profiles here as well. So I'm just playing with things now. We're done. We have a brand new profile. We're ready to shut down, open Photoshop, and start to edit. Oh, we're happy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>